Uh, the church believes in uh, scripture and, uh, you know, in the, in the Bible it says God created the earth uh, and all that's in it and uh, we should be stewards of it to keep it in balance. And uh, keep it in balance means that we've, we uh, depend on uh, uh, the earth for our food, we depend on air for breathing, we depend on a temperate climate, we depend on uh, the earth for uh, growing uh, food, uh, uh, the earth uh, sustains life and uh, our life uh, relates to God and God relates to us. Well, it uh, was the committee that was created because the uh, Reformed Church in America uh, supported it back in the uh, 1980s. Uh, we had a, a, a CEO for the Reformed Church called uh, Wes uh, Grenberg Michelson, and uh, he was an environmentalist, and he had written several books uh, on the environment. And uh, so he established that uh, every uh, congregation ought to identify a caring for creation uh, person to uh, spread that kind of word to the congregation. Uh, he established uh, these caring for creation coordinators and I happened to be the appointed for our congregation and also was the coordinator for uh, the uh, Mid-Hudson Classes where we uh, got 35 other churches to name uh, uh, named, uh, coordinators. And uh, hence, uh, this got started uh, through the initiative of the uh, headquarters of the Reformed Church in America. Well, Rhinebeck Reformed is involved in uh, uh, many ways. Uh, early, uh, early on, we started uh, celebrating Caring for Creation in April, close to the secular Earth Day, uh, as, with a worship service, and the theme was uh, uh, creation. And sometimes we would have uh, speakers, uh, external speakers come in and talk. And uh, during those kind of uh, worship services, uh, we, we would have liturgy that was appropriate, uh, you know, uh, like uh, Genesis, uh, well, it speaks to that where uh, we should be stewards of the earth. And uh, then after the worship, why uh, we'd meet in Fellowship Hall and uh, we would uh, have uh, uh, environmentally friendly snacks. <laughs> so things like uh, uh, organic foods, which don't uh, pollute uh, the earth. Uh, we would. Uh, feature uh, tropical nuts, which encourage uh, rainforest to prosper, things like that. And, uh, and, and local uh, milk and uh, products, uh, which uh, uh, are more uh, uh, earth friendly than uh, products that have to be transported over uh, thousands of miles. What was the initial reaction to caring for creation? Well, it was uh, somewhat uh, uh, modest, uh, but I think since we've been uh, doing this for uh, oh, probably 30 years, uh, the congregation came to believe in it and was very supportive. Uh, it took a little uh, uh, nudging to get the pastor uh, encouraged, and now he's uh, one of the biggest supporters we have. You know, uh, just the way the church goes about uh, uh, saying this is uh, part of our faith to care for creation, it gets people to think about what they should be doing in their personal lives. Uh, so uh, it's, uh, it's the sort of thing that uh, uh, it rubs off over, over time and uh, you know it doesn't happen all of a sudden but I think uh, people have responded in their personal lives to 
uh, do things like uh, recycle, uh, 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 drive uh, energy efficient cars, uh, things like that, and take care of uh, waste, uh, toxic waste, uh, do that properly, those kind of things. Uh, I, th I think it's rubbed off on the congregation. The uh, committee most recently has uh, uh, achieved a real milestone in uh, uh, making uh, things happen. Uh, we're 100% uh, getting our electricity in the church from solar panels. And we've done this by uh, subscribing to uh, a program called Community Solar that probably many people are familiar with. It's been publicized a lot. Uh, where uh, certain uh, agencies uh, build solar farms, you know, with a couple thousand solar panels uh, soaking up the sun and delivering that electricity to the power company. So we subscribed uh, to uh, that through uh, a company called uh, Nexamp. Uh, and we uh, went online uh, about two years ago, March of uh, 2020, to uh, get our electricity from solar panels. And is we've avoided about 60,000 pounds of CO2, uh, avoided putting that much CO2 into the atmosphere, 60,000 pounds. And in, if you want to look at it a different way, we've uh, done what uh, could have been done if we had planted 475 trees. So uh, uh, if you want to get it into numeric terms, uh, what the church has done uh, has been very effective and, and we will be continuing to do this. Uh, solar panels have a very long life uh, so that uh, we'll be uh, over two years of what those numbers generated that much over, uh, you know, the next uh, 30 years. Just imagine how much uh, CO2 we will be avoiding. So we, uh, that, that's probably one of our biggest achievements that uh, is factual that you can measure. How did you become interested in the environment? Well, I uh, worked on uh, the Gemini space program back in the uh, 60s, 1960s. That was uh, the follow-on to the Mercury program and the uh, uh, precessor to uh, the Apollo program. And uh, that program developed the techniques that Apollo needed to land on the moon, like uh, 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 space navigation, uh, rendezvous, docking, uh, re-entry guidance, those kind of things. So uh, in that process, I became aware of how fragile the Earth's atmosphere is. If you, if you look at the Earth's atmosphere, it's about uh, 60 miles thick. And if you look at the Earth, it's 8,000 miles in diameter. So you've got a 60 mile uh, 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 skin around the earth and that atmosphere does tremendous things in protecting the, uh, the life on the earth. It's, uh, you know, it brings us rain, it brings us oxygen, it uh, brings us temperate climate, it uh, grows our food. Uh, it's all dependent on the, on the atmosphere. And so uh, this uh, space program that I was in I realized how important the atmosphere is and how thin it is and how easily it is to contaminate. It's like uh, the skin of an apple, actually. If uh, you look at an apple, the skin is very thin compared to the diameter of an apple. And that's how the atmosphere is to the Earth, uh, a very thin protective layer that is really uh, the most essential component for life on Earth. 
what uh, 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 quote that uh, sticks in my head uh, from uh, from those times is one made by Jim Lovell when he spent uh, 14 days in uh, orbit around the Earth. He came back to Earth and said, "The Earth is a grand oasis in the vastness of space," and uh, that. Uh, is really significant if you uh, think about uh, space and uh, other places in the universe. Uh, nobody has discovered any place like Earth in the universe. It's unique. It's uh, one of those things that uh, God created, and I uh, and I guess he. He, he likes it and he likes us uh, <laughs> so that uh, we, we need to uh, protect it. And uh, looked out the window at the earth and I want to show a picture of this to you, um, which uh, I, I keep in uh, hanging in the in the hallway. That just reminds me of uh, how Earth is such a vital living place compared to the bleakness of other uh, planetary objects. Like the surface of the Moon here looks gray and dull. Uh, out into space is black, but the Earth is a visual uh, uh, piece of uh, a planet that is just superb uh, uh, in in the, in the universe, and is 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 really so unique that uh, we just have to uh, preserve it.